Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this session. In the interest of time, I want to make sure we give the speakers as much time as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. Before the session starts, I have a statement to read on behalf of the conference. The Open Education Southern Symposium strives to make an open, inclusive, and friendly environment for all participants. All attendees are expected to help maintain a professional and welcoming environment free of any type of harassment by being mindful of the space and time you are taking up, being aware of the dynamics of power and privilege, being considerate of others' desire for privacy, being respectful of others and accepting the differences in opinions and circumstances, create a stronger collaborative environment and actively challenging individual biases and assumptions. The presenters can now begin while I drop the full code of conduct in the chat. Thank you. Okay, uh, let me know if you can all see this or, or if you can't see this. We can see it. Okay, thank you. So hi everyone and welcome to our presentation about demonstrating the impact of OER through collaboration with peer learning support services. Um, my name is Yang Wu. I'm the open resources librarian from Clemson University um, Libraries. And I'm Rachel Anderson. I am an associate director at our Academic Success Center at Clemson University. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're um, from South Carolina, and we'd like to talk to you about how we integrated OER into our peer learning services. But first, to introduce uh, peer learning services, I'll turn things over to Rachel. Yeah, so what are peer learning services? This is kind of a broad term that can be used to encompass any time students are helping other students. But what we're gonna talk about for our presentation is the more formal way that this can be implemented. And so that could include a wide range of different models, um, but it's kind of a expansion of peer tutoring um, and can emphasize more active learning, um, different ways that students can collaborate with each other and it capitalizes on the literature behind that idea of peer mentoring and supporting each other's learning um, longer term. And so this can come across in a couple of different um, formal ways at a university or at any other institution. And so what we're sharing is like five different um, names, common names that are used for some of these peer learning support models. Um, supplemental instruction is one that's probably the most common and most widespread across the United States. Um, but the overarching theme for all of these is um, some sort of undergraduate student, um, or sometimes there's a staff person involved as well, but they're trained folks who are um, prepared to support students in different learning environments. And a lot of times there's group work and collaboration that happens among those student participants as well. Um, and so there's a good amount of literature that talks about the benefits of these types of experiences. And some of that literature starts with talking about um, how that environment can um, foster lots of different things. It can foster confidence in students, improve learning strategies. Um, there's grade data and withdrawal rates that get reduced. Um, when the students are involved in these types of experiences and they're learning from each other. Um, so this day, this, what we're showing here is mainly related to the participants in those sessions, but there's also a lot of um, data about the benefits for the peer leaders themselves also. Um, and part of that is also their understanding of better learning habits and motivation as they're supporting others. So this is um, a pretty important way that we've utilized at Clemson to really support our students in a lot of the freshman and sophomore level courses. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more specifically about Clemson University and how we have this set up. So um, our class of 1956 Academic Success Center was um, endowed by that class. And so it's currently um, our kind of area, the center is housed underneath um, undergraduate studies. So we have part of our budget coming from undergraduate studies at the university level, but we also have some endowments um, that we use to fund the center's programs and things as well. 
Um, we have two main peer learning support programs. One is peer assisted learning or PAL. It's very similar to supplemental instruction if you're familiar with that model. Um, but we also have tutoring. And both of these programs are offered for a large number of courses on Clemson's campus. Um, and they're offered for free to students. Um, it's included in the cost of their tuition. So part of that tuition money goes to pay for it, but they don't need to pay um, any additional fees or anything in order to take advantage of these services. Um, PAL alone supports about 16 different courses on campus. A lot of those are foundational courses, um, calculus, chemistry, um, some of the accounting classes, some of the engineering classes. And it's a lot of classes that have a large percentage of students who typically earn a D or an F, or they withdraw from the course. And so our goal is really that retention of those undergraduate students. Um, and it's also to help them become confident, independent learners beyond the courses they're currently taking. So not only are we trying to support them in the current course that they're in, but we wanna reinforce those concepts and have it be approaches that they can translate to all of their future learning experiences so that it hits that overall retention for the university. So we train our peer leaders to make sure that we're hitting a lot of those goals. We train our peer leaders in um, bringing in some of the current education literature and education theory into that training experience. Um, we talk with them about metacognition, about problem solving theory. Um, we talk with them about Bloom's taxonomy and use Bloom's as kind of a scaffold to help leaders understand how they can move students from just general understanding of information to really that applying and analyzing and evaluating information, because those are the tools that are going to help them do better on tests and help them with that long term learning in other courses. Um, we do a lot of work towards fostering confidence in students and that growth mindset as well. Um, and so these um, four elements are just sort of four of the um, brief things that we talk with the leaders about, but there's a large number of other education literature and theories that we bring into play to, in order to hit those goals of long-term student success. So where our collaboration kind of started was from a couple of needs and a couple of things that we thought would be really great to include that OER helped us fulfill. Um, and so one of those is that cost of textbooks. Um, textbooks are not only expensive for students to purchase, and so a lot of times students we found weren't purchasing the textbook, but at the Academic Success Center, we employ our PAL leaders and tutors. Um, that's about 150 undergraduate student employees. And in order to provide them with the textbooks and the resources to be able to support those courses was a pretty expensive endeavor for us as well. And so we wanted to have other ways to be able to support those peer leaders and open education resources really was a good way to make that connection so we could support our peer leaders in supporting other students um, without having that financial expense involved. Um, we also wanted to have a large variety of things in order to engage students in those sessions. And OER provides that um, different ways of looking at information, different practice problems, just a, a broader way of understanding information and getting those students engaged in that session. And so we wanted to equip the peer leaders with that OER resource to be able to engage students in sessions. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that students knew where OER, how to locate OER resources, what was available to them, the fact that it was free. Um, a lot of these things are available, but students a lot of times aren't aware of them is what we have found anecdotally. And so we were interested in making sure that students had those resources and knew how to use them for that long-term learning success. And from the uh, perspective of OER programs, OER, the use of OER in peer learning can also have several uh, purposes. One is that I'm interested in demonstrating the value of OER in many different educational contexts. Um, certainly OER is traditionally seen in terms of uh, its value in teaching. But of course, some students um, already use OER as kind of uh, supplemental support materials when they can't understand concepts. Uh, for example, it's well known that lots of students use Khan Academy as a form of, uh, I guess, kind of cheat sheet when they're having trouble in math classes or science, science classes. But what if we can use OER in, uh, in purposes that go beyond really sort of a simple cheat sheet, but to use OER 
in context um, of instruction that are outside of the uh, classroom where the students can use OER in a more complex way and to really improve their learning in such ways such as uh, moving beyond the blue, uh, to the new levels of the Bloom's taxonomies hierarchy. Um, and um, peer learning services also are a form of indirect outreach on OER. The peer leaders work with instructors. They support uh, and have uh, certain courses and have contact with the instructors. And if the peer learning, uh, peer leaders um, use OER, they can play an, a role in influencing instructors to use OER as well. And also um, students use OER, but can we, uh, through this, use how students are using OER as a form of understanding how students learn? And if this is the case, can we use, um, like, can we, through studying how students use OER, find ways to better make OER suit student learning? So how our collaboration started um, was I reached out to Yang in fall of 2019. And so I'm going to share a little bit about kind of what my asks were and how um, he has supported peer learning at Clemson University since then. So I reached out in fall of 2019 and asked if Yang could help kind of bring OER to our peer leaders in part of their training. Um, and what, what that conversation led to initially was Yang pulling together a lot of different OER resources based on for each of the classes that our peer leaders support and created and kind of curated those things on a website for us um, that we share with the peer leaders, but also that's available to students at Clemson as well. And it makes it much easier for them to locate some of the less common OER um, outside of Khan Academy or those things that they already end up finding. Um, and it's been a really helpful resource that he's continued to curate every and update for us every semester. What I also asked Yang to do was um, I invited him to come and be a guest speaker at our training course that where we train the peer leaders. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about this course first. Um, this course is a semester long one credit hour pass fail class that all of our brand new PAL leaders and brand new tutors take during their first semester of employment with us. So it's kind of like a practicum experience in a lot of ways. They're holding sessions doing their role, um, navigating all of those challenges with students, and they're coming back to this training course once a week, and they're sharing those successes and challenges, getting feedback from each other. This is where we approach that learning theory and learning literature, um, education literature that I shared earlier. Um, I have some mini lectures where I um, share with them that information for 10 or 15 minutes, and then they spend a lot of time thinking about the practical application of that for their sessions. And so OER fit really well into um, the structure of this class, um, and it gave them someone else to connect with at the library. Um, they were able to see someone besides me telling them that they need to use these resources. Um, so I've appreciated Yang doing that, and he's done that every semester. We have this class fall and spring, and he's done that every semester since fall of 2019, um, and shared with them that um, guide that he's created on the webpage, um, and shared with them other ways that they can utilize that OER resource. And then moving forward, he's also connected our peer leaders with other opportunities and resources that the library provides. And I'm gonna let Yang talk a little bit more in detail about exactly what um, additional resources the library has available for students and for peer leaders. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Rachel. So I wanted to make sure that students have the best resources to support other students uh, through peer learning activities. And um, at first I wasn't too sure if OER is necessarily the best support but the library has other programs, including a textbook rental program where students can, uh, where we have a collection of textbooks that are used for foundational courses and students can check them out for several hours at a time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so I uh, paired um, my kind of support of the student peer leaders um, in OER with this textbook um, uh, borrowing service. So, this begins our research activities. Um, we didn't specifically um, begin this as a research project, but instead it began as a project um, sort of on both our 
out of both our interests to see um, if OER are really useful for student peer learning, or if students would actually prefer to use actual textbooks that were assigned to the class, like the textbook rental program. So in the fall of uh, 2019 and spring of 2020, we did a survey of all the uh, students who were enrolled in the training course for peer leaders. Um, there were about um, 62 uh, PAL leaders and there were also 41 tutors. So we gave them a survey on Qualtrics and we asked them if they use OER or the textbook rentals to see how many are using each. Uh, we also asked, um, you know, how did they use the OER or the textbooks? Um, what purposes did they use these for? And we also, of course, um, asked them to give um, comment feedback on um, the purposes and how they're using the OER or uh, rental textbooks. And what we found is kind of interesting. So in total, there were 110 responses. Um, uh, there were only about 103 students, but what we found is that eight of the survey's responses were incomplete. So it's uh, very likely that the, some students um, filled out uh, an incomplete form, but then they came back and they've completed the form. So we pretty much from our um, uh, forms that are completed, survey forms that are completed, have um, responses from every student. And what we found is interesting, and because most students actually prefer to use OER resources in their peer learning activities, um, not that many use textbook rental. In their comments, they reported sharing OER with a specific number of students, could be one or two, or could be 20. And they also, many of them in general reported using and sharing OER with a lot of the students they um, supported. And some peer leaders also showed the works uh, to the instructors in the courses they supported. And they use OER for a number of purposes. Certainly many used OER for, you know, in preparing for their support of students and in their peer support uh, activities. But what we found is that many students also use these OER, particularly textbooks for their personal study. And they also shared um, OER textbooks with uh, their friends. So to explore this a bit further, we came up with an assignment in the fall of 2020. Um, it's kind of a qualitative case study where we asked students um, to uh, write several comments on a number of issues, and each of these served a specific purpose. Firstly, we asked them to integrate um, OER into their activities supporting students and to describe which OER resources they use. And the purposes of this is, is to see uh, which OER are widely used in peer learning sessions. We also ask um, the students to describe which part of the OER they use are most helpful. And this is to see, um, you know, like, you know, what do student use of OER in peer learning activities say about their preferences about OER? and if OER can be improved to better serve these uh, purposes. Um, and peer leaders are also asked to describe how they use OER to prepare for their sessions. And this is uh, to explore, explore how peer leaders are using OER and what does this say about, um, you know, peer leaders as students and as um, kind of student support instructors and how can OER be made to fit uh, their needs and peer leaders are also asked to discuss why they use, uh, discuss how they use OER in sessions with students. And this is to see, of course, how OER can be used in peer learning activities. So um, we had 58 uh, students and they all did this assignment. But for the purpose of our IRB approval, we can only show you eight of them. But these eight are, they show very important data. One is that the students seem to all really prefer three uh, OER made by three organizations, OpenStax, Lumen Learning, and LibreText. They like these uh, resources because they're easier to read and summarize than traditional textbooks. Um, they certainly have PDFs, but they're 
the students really like the web-based format of uh, these materials and their modular organization, which they found it was easier. It could be just it's because of COVID, but certainly students like the kind of website-based format of a lot of these books. And they like the fact that these, uh, these OER textbooks come with kind of, uh, they integrate their explanations with videos, graphs, and a lot of things. And this sort of is better than traditional textbooks. And they also liked it so that these um, books have a little bit of discussion and text, but then there's a lot of activities that are related with the textbook. Um, they also particularly liked OpenStax because it had conceptual relation, uh, questions related to a lot of subjects in STEM, as well as equation-based questions. And they actually thought that this was very good for, for testing the students they support. They can on one hand test conceptual questions, but also give them equation-based questions. And they also liked the great variety of OER textbooks. And the fact that many OER textbooks offer different explanations, um, uh, the different explanations for solving questions. And uh, they also like the additional questions. So we did another survey of in uh, spring 2021 to see of all the uh, student peer leaders that have used OER before, and just to see, um, you know, are they still using OER and how are they using OER and if it's beneficial uh, for the students. So what we found is that the peer leaders, um, we only got a limited number of results, but we found um, is significant is that peer leaders, most of them previously are not used to using textbooks, but when using OER textbooks, they increase their use of OER. They learn how to use textbooks. They began to appreciate different perspectives offered by different OER for solving problems. And they also appreciated a great variety of questions offered by OER. Um, many use the OER questions activities in their activities with students. They introduce students to different uh, strategies for solving problems gained from different OER. Um, they recommended students reuse and read OER textbooks. They encourage students to seek activities from reading textbooks, and they link these activities to Bloom's taxonomy. They would ask students, for example, to read a little bit of a textbook then to summarize main concepts, or they would ask students to uh, read a part of the textbook, give them a set of questions and say, which question fits a certain concept uh, in, um, uh, in that part of the book in order to get, get them to move beyond uh, just memorizing and to higher levels of the Bloom taxonomy, such as analyzing and applying. But of course, we found there were a number of limitations as well. Although most of the peer leaders use textbooks, some are just not using textbooks and they don't find the OER textbooks all that useful. Um, we also found that, you know, we need to find better ways to get students to use OER, the textbooks and the other materials in their activities with students and to better integrate these with concepts um, emphasized by the course, the uh, training course for student peer leaders such as getting them to train students to move up higher in the Bloom's taxonomy and also to train their skills in metacognition. And we also need to assess the impact of OER on the actual students that are being supported. Um, and we haven't done this yet. So there's a lot of uh, basis um, for future research, which is what we're planning to do. So here's some of the works we've cited and here's our contact information. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone has questions or comments? I don't see any questions coming in through um, the Q&A or the chat. Um, and it looks like we are just about out of time, but I want to thank you guys for sharing your research. This was very interesting. It was nice to see how OERs are used outside of the traditional classroom setting um, and you know, how other students are actually using it to assist other students. So that was very interesting. And I look forward to future research coming from you. Um, but I think that 
just about concludes our session for this afternoon. So thank you very much. And we'll go ahead and end the session. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. you.